And at the end of the day, shouldn't they pick up their veg at the same time? Okay, yes, it's more expensive and it won't be as fresh, but I think we're really lucky that people come down the road and because they do make that effort, we have to make that effort. Mm -hmm. We have to... So we provide a service. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a two-way street, really. And yeah. We like doing it. We just, we're quite lonely people, really. And we <laughs> enjoy seeing everybody come to the farm shop. And you, you, everybody... Everybody's so friendly and they say hello and you just get to know them. It's like a, an extended family. Yeah, that is all that matters. Keep buying your veg and you'll be healthy. Bye. And eating them, yeah. I'd like my son to have the opportunity to be a farmer if he wants to. He doesn't have to be. He can be whatever he likes as long as he's happy. But at this minute he says he'd like to be a farmer. He's only ten. But who knows? You know, you don't know what's around that corner. You know, he, he, he might decide, no, I don't want to do it. It's too wet and it's too cold, you know. And at this minute, he sits on the tractor and he beats the horn and he thinks it's fantastic, you know. What a lovely day, you know. But um, you know, if he wants to be a farmer, I want him to be a farmer because there's not many young people out there now that will have that chance. And I don't know where where the vegetables or the farming industry will come from because it's just, you know, they, these big farmers don't want the little ones in, but at the same time they haven't got anybody to continue that tradition. He does show a bit of interest. I'll certainly help him if he wants to, but if he wants to diversify into something else, well, I won't stop him because that's, you can't stop somebody from doing what they want to do in life. I hate cabbage, I hate Brussels sprouts, I definitely say, hate green beans and, um, and they're just horrible. Well, the farming industry's got so difficult because a lot of the bigger farmers want the smaller farmers out and they've made it quite a difficult business to still be in. Uh, they, they want everything with us. All our veg here, our little shop out there, wouldn't be ours anymore. They want it. They want to put their sign logo over it. It's just so sad when you think, like, when my in-laws came over in 1949, they arrived here, there must have been maybe 70 farmers out there at, during that time. And now we're left to about maybe 12 if that, and that is it. And it is just so, so cross, just because there's no need for it, no need at all. We've been asked to join this big group with, with, with them, and it is just not what we're going to do. This is not what we have worked so hard for. You know, if we let the bigger farmers get away with it, there won't be, many, there won't be any farmers in five or ten years' time, which is, makes me very cross, because I'm a farmer's daughter anyway. No, in a posh hotel. No. It's a miracle year. Oh, we are the way. 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 We can. Farming is you have to have pride in it. You've got to love it. You've got to love it to what you're doing. Um, you watch it growing it. You get the end result and think, great, yes, it's done all right. It's done, it's done well. It doesn't always work that way. But um, you try, you try, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But that's, that's life. I love the environment. I like nature as it, as it is. Natural way, um, living. Fresh air. You go in the fields, sometimes it can be early morning, you've got a beautiful sunset with an early mist. It's beautiful, it's really nice. We will still be here. You have to try and find something different and new and just 
keep on going. And that's that. <laughs>